Hi, everyone. Welcome to the conversation with Marissa Huber and Heather Kirtland, who are the forces behind the book Motherhood of Art. And I'm really looking forward to talking with both of you. Um, Marissa and Heather, would you like to start maybe by just uh, talking about your backgrounds, who you are, and uh, give the audience a little bit of a background? Sure, you wanna go first, give me a go. You go, I have, I have a lawnmower back here, I can hear. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Heather. I am um, half of the Carve Out Time for Art um, community, founders, I guess that's the way I would say it. I am a fine artist, so I, I'm a painter, and um, I live in Baltimore. I got a degree 20 years ago in painting and I'm still painting and um, motherhood certainly threw me for a loop when I um, first became a mom. And that's kind of how Marissa and I ended up connecting. And hi, I'm Marissa Huber. I'm an artist and I also do uh, pattern design. So I love doing designs to go on products. And I found that after I had my kids, I really wanted to do art more than ever. And I thought that was different than what everybody told me. So I set off to find role models and I ended up meeting Heather when I started interviewing some artist mothers and we teamed up because we both had this big dream to create a book for um, encouraging artist mothers and creative mothers that we didn't think existed. And we were so thrilled when the team at Schiffer saw our dream and could envision it with us after lots of no's and we created this book together. So, and I lived in Philadelphia, but I now live in South Florida where I'm from with my two children, my husband and my mom. Yeah, and I know that um, we were really excited about the book because it distills things in a way that can reach more people. But I know the book is really just kind of one um, format of the mission that you two have been working on for a while. and. Um, I wondered if you'd like to just sum up why you do what you do in terms of your work to help people understand what that relationship is between motherhood and being an artist. Marissa, why don't you talk about what drove you to start your blog? Because that was the impetus for how you and I got together. Yes, I think so. I, I did mention I have a day job in the interior design industry. So that's my full time career, but I really needed this creative outlet. And I think um, like for anybody here watching, if you have this yearning that you need to create, if you don't at least do it, sometimes you're a little bit miserable. And I know as a new mother, everybody was saying, you'll never have time to do this, take a shower, read a book ever again. And I thought that sounds so miserable. Like why? <laughs> why have children then, you know, and I always wanted kids. So um, I think that I wanted to prove to myself that it could, it could occur, that both could go together. I could create work that I wanted to and also raise children and find that life for myself and not, it didn't have to be the same as what everybody else was doing. And that was okay. So by finding more people like me and connecting, we inadvertently created this community, I would say, right, Heather? Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. I think um, I know for me, it was when I was in college, the underlying sentiment was if you had kids, you weren't going to be a serious artist. And I don't know that I really thought I was paying attention to hearing that over and over again. But when, when I had my first daughter, I really did have that identity crisis. I didn't know whether how to meld those two worlds and I'm like well they said it was impossible maybe it's impossible and then when I went in search of examples of it there were none there were no examples of of women that were mothers that were you know showing and had work in galleries or even major museums and those that had their work in major museums never discussed the fact that they were mothers if they were like it was so completely hidden. hidden and separated because you were afraid you weren't going to be taken seriously so I struggled a lot and I really kept thinking, man, when I got out of my fog and started to become creative again and knew that it was possible and that I didn't lose my creativity and you know, I kind of got a sense of self back enough to say, who is telling me this and why? Like, why am I listening to what they're saying? I, I really felt this need to put what I was looking for out there into the world. Like where, what could I do for another new mom that 
lets them know that they're not alone in this and that it is possible. It may look different. It may actually make your art better. You may be more prof uh, you know, proactive after you have children. Um, and I ran across Marissa doing interviews with their artist moms. And I reached out to her because it was like, this is, this is what I was looking for. And after our first phone call, we completely hit it off. And I threw the idea of a book out there to her and I, a total stranger, like she's a total stranger to me at this point. I answered some interview questions. She told me to dream big in the last last sentence. And I said, hey, you wanna collaborate in a book? <laughs> and, I, and at the same time, I hadn't really told anybody, but I felt, I was getting so lit up by interviewing these artist mothers and also a few fathers, but mainly I was focusing on women because I did it, my husband is a painter and people weren't telling him the same things that I was being told in the office environment and just out at the grocery store. So I really wanted to explore that, you know, like the, the gender roles of the parents as well. Um, but yeah, I, I thought this will be a fun book and I've always wanted to write a book. So I'm like, oh, Heather, you know, <laughs> and it was just a wonderful pairing. I mean, I would not have dreamed that up, but I, we didn't meet for two years until after we started collaborating together and people yeah. couldn't believe it, you know? And I, and it drove us to start an online community. And I think without that, I don't know that we would have pushed forward for the book because yeah. it was, it was such a validation that it was needed and there was a community and there was a group of people that were excited and wanted to support each other. So it was huge. I, it was, the community really pushed us forward with, you know, it wasn't an easy task, the book. <laughs> But I think the key takeaway is that you don't have to have a million people, but if you can find your people who really connects with an idea or a purpose, then it can be really powerful, you know? And we created what we needed too. Yes, exactly. Um, that's really interesting that, especially that the two of you worked together to create this book without ever meeting in person for the first couple of years. And what that reminds me of is the fact that now that balance between motherhood and art, it's got pandemic extras piled onto it. And I wonder if you've you know, heard or talked with any mothers who are finding things hard in a different way now because of the quarantines and so on. I think everything yeah. is hard right now. You know, for, and I want to preface it by saying I feel grateful and privileged because I, I have a job and I'm able to work from home with my family. So be, be just clear in that. But yeah, it's yeah. been very hard. I think like some days just feel, you know, like a one out of 10. And some days you feel like, <laughs> hey, you know, things are going all right. So instead of going day to day, I think of how was my week as an average, you know? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. And I think for me, I'm finding a lot of parallels with my situation currently and my situation as a new mom. Um, my kids are older now and they're a lot more self-sufficient, but all of a sudden they're not as self-sufficient when you throw in virtual schooling. And the fact that they can see me all day long makes me think that I'm accessible all day long. Um, so that stress is back again. And, um, and the whole underlying anxiety that you have as a new mom trying to keep this you know, questioning everything you do and worrying about your child's safety. And that's kind of there too. So I feel very similar to some of the stressors and, and lack of time that I had when I was a new mom. So I'm, I'm certainly referring back to, to, to all the things we talk about with our community on, you know, have a little grace with yourself. Like, you know, it, your creativity will always be there. It, you can take a break if you need to like focus on family for a little while, it's okay. It doesn't make you any less of an artist. Um, so grace is the biggest thing I'm revisiting over and over again. And um, instead we have a dog, not a child. Um, and, uh, and you know, there's little snippets of time. Like I make sure that I have an area set up to work at all times. So if I have 15 minutes and I can jump in there, it's ready to go. Yeah. And I think that can relate to anybody. It's yeah. how can you be flexible? How can you be adapt? Well, I guess that's the same, but just being adaptable. Cause I think new motherhood or anybody in the pandemic right now, you know, you might say, right. I'll do this and this, but it's not going to pan out and you're going to have to change plans. So just for like a tactical thing as I want to put like buffers, if I had a deadline, you know, make sure you have an extra few hours or an extra couple of days, if you can, 
you know, just things like that, because the weird things will happen or your Wi-Fi is going to shut down in the middle of a Zoom meeting or something, you know. Mm-hmm. But what else? How about I mean, you guys, though, Sandra, anything pandemic related, any specific types of questions? Well, um, what you mentioned about mother artists now especially needing to to tune into that built-in resilience that we've all got and really pay attention to using your resilience to get through um that reminds me of a lot of talk that's been going on all year and during the pandemic about pivoting in terms of businesses in terms of how you set up your daily household routine, that idea of suddenly turning, but deliberately doing it, changing direction. And that that whole idea of constantly being ready for change and being ready to react to it, that, you know, in a lot of ways is being a mom. And it really seems to get to the core of the struggles that so many people have in, in the community to balance and keep that creativity part of the the emphasis during really hard times um are there are there other kind of common threads that you found in terms of people trying to step up and balance when things are changing all the time i think well one thing is people seem to look at each other and I notice there's a disconnect between what you see somebody else doing and your assumptions of how their their day is going or their life is because you might see a pretty picture on their social media and that's usually not the case you know i might be taking a nice picture for you know oh look you can buy this for the holidays but behind that my kid has spilled cheese in the raspberries i mean and trying to feed it to me but you know maybe i'll put that behind the scenes and the stories for later um what else just, just everything's kind of a, a little scrambled, um, having maybe like what used to be the dining room is now the, the school area, but then, you know, everything is constantly shifting and just not, I think we have to not hold on so tightly to what we think needs to happen or should happen because whatever's going to happen is going to happen right now. And then, you know, just lowering your standards. I'm big on lowering my standards. Yeah. So, um, that goes along okay. great. Yeah, it goes along with grace. I missed some of that because I got frozen. Um, but I think for me too, how it affects creativity. It really does affect your creativity. And and I constantly am trying to remind myself that if I don't have the energy to create, it's okay. Like I'm still always using that like psychic time, like in my head to think about things, even subconsciously and relating to what's going on. And it's going to come out of my work. It's going to come about around full circle. Like that was, that's the huge, that's the biggest lesson I might take away from being a new mom because I was terrified I'd lost it forever. And now I know that I can take a break and that I don't need to panic if I can't get in the studio. Cause I know for me, sadness and anxiety, I can't go paint it out. Like that's just not, I'm not that type of creative. Um, I can sketch and I can do things that make me feel better, but I can't create anything worth anything, you know, when I'm feeling like that so it's better for me to stay out of the studio for a little bit until I like have a minute and then I can return yeah well I think like the identity of in any in any terms no one can be constantly doing everything at this level at the same time so you know just like the seasons you know you have highs and lows and things die and then they rebloom so sometimes I think with creativity it's it's like a circle you know I might have this thinking time and then I might have like these ideas emerge and then, you know, it's work and you're getting a little bored and you're looking for the next thing and it's just evolving. But you're right, it doesn't go anywhere and it's okay to pause. We, we've, we've been saying pause a lot this year, you know? Yeah. We worked yeah. on the book and that had to pause like my art making time. Mm-hmm. And, but that was okay because the creating the book in this resource is very fulfilling creatively, just in a different way than maybe art making. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and Heather, well, I think it was you, Marissa, you, you mentioned a, a minute ago about a key, um, a key 
tactic for you is lowering your standards and um, maybe you could, low standards. Well, maybe you could talk a little more about that because I think that's really interesting. Um, are we talking about the standards that society puts on mothers and artists, or are we talking about you know the the standards that that women put into their own heads and um, what does that what does that mean about lowering standards automatically I think everybody reacts to oh that means low quality but what does it really mean Heather do you want to start yeah um, I feel like it's a combination of both because we get what's in our head from what we're told over and over again and to try to su suss out what's truly important to us and what really works and whatever your individual situation is is really kind of the way to figure that out, but it's hard to separate the two. And I think sometimes we're already asking way too much of ourselves anyway. Like I think I'm all for chasing dreams and chasing goals, but Marissa and I talked about this a lot. Like you can set that big goal, but it is all small, actual items that will get you there. So like you can say, I'm getting one thing done this week. You don't have to have this giant goal and then just run yourself ragged to the end because I think along the way a lot of opportunities will present themselves and if you're blind to that while you're rushing ahead you need to take that moment to to not put so much pressure on yourself and I think you can then focus on those one those little tasks and do them well so that when the time you get to the finish line you feel a little more proud you've brought some more people with you and I think another thing just looking back on this year for me I've had to learn to look around me a little more because I'm, I'm staring ahead and I'm looking at all the things that didn't happen or go the way that we had anticipated. But there are so many amazing things that I have been open to and have seen when I have taken the minute to stop focusing on what you know could be, would be, should be, and look at what's happening and then go down those paths that have been really kind of cool and I would not know that I would have done that otherwise. So back to like lowering the standard and having grace with yourself, you need to like, you need to not overdo it because then we constantly feel like we're failing and that doesn't put you in a mindset to create anything. Yeah. And I guess I should have said it's, you can't do everything and you can't do everything well. Right. Um, and then what I think, what is it that I really want to do with my time? You know, is it playing with my kids? Sure. But it's also, is it doing work? Do I need to get that? We have so many things placed on us by society, you're right. And then our expectations of ourselves. And I think that can be really hard. But if you can be clear with what it is that you really want, you know, I want to be a good mom to my children, a good partner to my husband, things like that. But I also want to give myself time for my own creative creativity. So that also my children see that and they know that when they're adults and they have to do all these things that we don't want to do all the time, they can make time for their own pursuits, you know, because yeah. otherwise life is just chores and, you know, boring things. You know? <laughs> um, but I also think that you know, it, it's hard to be a good employee and a, and a good parent and then help with the homework. Like there's so many things. So when I say lowering the standards, like, do I need to make a five course meal every night for dinner? No, maybe tonight we get fast food, but we will spend 20 minutes playing to do the science activity, you know? So trying to find that juggle or the balance, you know, not everything's going to be A plus. <laughs> does that help? Does that summarize better? <laughs> I, including my children's grades this year. <laughs> yeah. Or if you don't want to do something, you know, maybe you can let that go. Yeah, that, that, is really important, I think, for a lot of us to hear um, right now, especially. I, I was wondering, because you two have connected with the community so much about the topic of balancing, um, maybe you could share some stories with us about how different people have done that in, in their own everyday life. I know that everybody, like you mentioned, has to do it their own way, but maybe hearing a little bit about how some artists who are also dealing with you know five kids at home how they found ways to cope are there any ideas that you know really strike you that you might want to share i'm gonna i'm gonna mention um oh i'm blanking aaron spencer as an artist we know lives in the northeast 
and she will, she's a uh, landscape painter, but she paints outside. So she has a portable kit. And what she does is she puts her kids in the minivan and she's like, you can wash whatever you want on your iPads. You know, she leaves the AC or the windows down depending on the weather. And then she goes and paints and then she goes home, you know? So it might take an hour or two, but that's their screen time, you know, where they can play in the car and she gets her work done, which I think is cool. Heather, you have one. It looks like maybe Heather's frozen. <laughs> but one thing I, I enjoyed about your book is the fact that there are so many really personal um, conversations from all of the artists that you included. And everybody has these great tips that, you know, by, by connecting and sharing, other people can try too. Um, Heather, if you're back with us, um, or Marissa, I, I sure. think um, more, more of these examples would be great to help people's minds start working to figure it out. Well, there is a woman in Chicago, Kate Lewis, in our book, and she yeah. Dude, I was thinking she of. swings yeah. everywhere. I mean, she has this old Chicago home and she hung swings from the rafters in her basement and she would swing her kid and paint. And you're like, Who? it's, a, it's incredible. But if you don't have that resource, you know, you can, um, what's the other one I'm trying to think. Some people had childcare, you know, like well, that's yeah. hard during the pandemic, but that's an important one. And that's their day that they paint every week. Go ahead, Heather. I know some people in our community talk a lot about um, swapping even if you have other artist friends, which is, is hard too. I mean, I know around me when I had young kids, I had no creative friends at all. So it was really hard to like explain why I needed time, but they would swap time. They would swap studio days. Hey, I'm gonna drop my kid off for a play date once again. Not something we can do at the moment, but they would drop their kid off for a play date and swap with another day. So. One, you don't feel that guilt that you're asking someone to watch your kid for, you know, you, you it's you, quid pro quo, you can help each other a little bit. And I really thought that was great. And I think, I, like we said before, like the kitchen table set up and kits that people would make and like containers where they can just open it up and create and then throw it all back in the box and put it away when that time's over. Actually, yeah. I'm just, this is right here. Hold on. This piece I made, I'm gonna stick it behind me for a second. This collage I made, I made it at my kitchen table and on the couch with my daughter. And I just cut out these individual flowers. So like I sat next to her one morning and I cut out a bunch of flowers. And then another day while I was cooking dinner, I cut more flowers. And then I, when I had time either at night when she was asleep, I could paste it all together and assemble it. But I think that is one thing that I use a lot. Um, using mediums and things that work with your situation. So water-based mediums, watercolor is great. You can just leave it and come back. Um, cut paper collage is really great. If you put anything in a tray, you can kind of move it around and follow children around, you know, or creating next to your kids and, you know, give them something to do. And then you can work on your own project. Sometimes that works, especially for older kids, I think. Yeah. And I think we talk about pivoting again, like you, sometimes you, you're, you're stuck in your ways and you think this is the only artwork I'm gonna work on. I work in oils and that's what I do. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, sometimes pen and paper, pencil, sketch pad, like perhaps it opens up a whole new, you know, world for you, but you can do that easily. It's not as messy. You can do it at the kitchen table, you know, at the couch, at the park while the kids play. That's another big place that I can work out ideas. When I take the kids out to go do something to play and they're off and running. I can be present, but I can kind of work through some ideas in my sketchbook and at least make myself feel like I'm moving forward, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or even just journaling. Like if you're, if you find the only time you can have is maybe on the computer, that's time that it might not be art making time, but you could be updating your website or your artist bio, you know, administrative tasks, yeah. journaling, maybe you're journaling down ideas. I like to think while I'm washing dishes and that's when some of the best ideas come to me. Just write them down for later so I don't forget. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's, those are, those are really great things to remember, especially that that um, idea, Heather, that you mentioned really struck me about how all of us are used to routine and we're stuck in our ways and that applies to our art practice too. Yeah. So grabbing this 
anytime, whenever you have to pivot to realize, oh, wait, this is a rut that I'm in and maybe I'll do something different. I really love that idea because that's making positive out of challenges, which I mean, that's motherhood and art are both all about that. Um, in, in relation to those coping ideas, um, could you talk a little bit about how community and connecting to people outside your household is important or what role that plays in being able to be a mom and an artist simultaneously? I can, uh, for me, I greatly missed um, having the community that I had in college. You know, you have group crit, you work in studios next to each other. And I never could replicate that even before, you know, marriage and kids, because, you know, you'd have to run a studio space and you have to like the people you're working with. And, and I, I really did miss having conversations. And I'll go back to saying again, not everyone has creative people in their life. My husband's not a creative person. Um, you know, my friends, I'm lucky enough, I have Marissa and my best friend are creative people, but it's hard to find people that want to talk about the things you want to do. And as Marissa and I have learned time and time again, just conversations with someone else that's creative not only re-energizes you and excites you about what you want to do, you come up with ideas that you would have never thought about before and, and a totally different perspective. So I'm ho I think Marissa and I both hoped with Carve Out Time for Art, people would find those connections. We even did a couple projects to kind of set up people on phone dates which was hugely successful because um, everyone was terrified to talk on the phone and meet new people. But once they found another creative, like these phone conversations connected them with someone else anywhere in the world. And Marissa was great at figuring out who would be good matches. Um, and they continued these phone dates to kind of push each other forward and check in. And now the importance of it is tenfold. And I have found in my life, hmm, ironically, I'm a little zoomed out, as I think a lot of us are, that the phone calls that I used to dread, because I'm more of a texter, have really been a lifeline. Like being able to sit on the phone or talk while I'm going for a walk um, and reaching out to other people just to remind myself, you know, we're not alone. We're all going through this. Um, if my to-do list didn't get done this week, neither did have to be who I talked to. So there's, there's a sometimes a negative side of comparison, but it is really nice also to check in and know that you're not the only person going through stuff. And what I love about our community is that people seem to be fairly honest with each other about, you know, how, what's happening and what they're going through and super supportive in that same vein. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sharon. So I think it's absolutely instrumental I mean, for anyone. I mean, the, the bulk of it is are you able to connect with people who get a specific part of you, you know, and some people have that in real life and some people don't, you know, but the internet has been this great equalizer where I have a great friend in Australia who I might chat with, you know, on, on direct message, you know, once a week. And we have so much in common and we can kind of share tips and stories, which is really kind of special. I don't know if I'll ever meet her in real life, but I feel like I really do know her. And now everybody on the internet that, you know, you can be friends with anybody. I don't have a friend in Antarctica yet, but that would be cool, you know. But and I think- People not feel alone and not yeah, isolated. And, and that's the big on pandemic, um, being a, a mother of a newborn and being kind of stuck in the house, you know, just checking in with people and saying, hey, I'm not, I haven't painted in a while and I'm feeling bad. And they're saying, me neither, don't worry about it, you know. Um, or, hey, is your kid having, being really frustrated in Zoom right now because he's seven <laughs> and I can call Heather and she's like, oh yeah, me too, you know. Yeah, yeah. Normal. Yeah, there's definitely a whole new level of mom guilt with that on top of everything else. Yeah, you know, I keep saying this year has made me feel like I am not doing anything well. Um, and then I have to remind myself to lower the standards, lower the bar a little bit. And that in this situation, I am not doing half bad. <laughs> yeah. But I think also um, for creative, they tend to be a pretty introverted bunch. And uh, Marissa and I obviously are not, but um, I find that once, but they still need connection. And I think they forget that sometimes, you know, because it's easier to stay in your shell and be your introvert and be in your studio and do your work. But I think there comes a time for growth and connection. And for people that are introverted, it's Instagram and social media, it's a little easier because you don't have to put 
yourself out there, you know, face to face with people. So it's like a little entryway into finding a social niche. I think that's the common thread though that I've heard from everybody is they're I mean, I think everyone's looking for connection, whether you're shy or not, you know, it could be that you're connecting with a book that you love, but, you know, just not to, to, to feel part of something. We're humans. I think that's hardwired in us, but when you can really see yourself or see another who is like a kindred spirit, I mean, that feels really energizing and special, I think. Yeah. And it makes what, it makes the hard work that you want to do that's inside of you, um, feel worth it you know, it kind of validates you and reminds you that it's okay, you know, because if somebody doesn't understand that in your real life and they think, well, why are you making all this work? You know, you're spending money on supplies and not everything is monetary. I think that's what people forget. Sometimes the work is about something bigger than making a living or, or something else when it comes to yeah. creative pursuits. Yeah. It's great if you can get paid too, of course, but <laughs> I think but that the a lot is the parallel almost. Yeah. Yeah. We can talk about that all day. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's a question and I'm not, I'm not sure if you two have answers, but now in the world that we're all living in, it might be a little easier to have your first child and focus on these realities and these ideas about motherhood is possible to coexist with being an artist. I'm wondering if you've, um, if you've heard of anyone who maybe uh, kind of bought into the societal falsehood that you can't do both until they reached a certain age or until maybe their kids reached a certain age and then they were able to realize wait i could pick up my art work again i didn't have to set my career aside does that make sense like coming maybe coming back to it later on yeah, yeah. you have an example if you don't do you have one yeah well it's probably the same one go ahead marissa <laughs> no, actually, mine's in real life. I have a friend, Margaret, who's 97. So you don't know her. I'm sorry. She's awesome. But she said she paints, you know, watercolor. She's blowing, you know, slowing down now. But she says, you know, I raised my kids. And then once I was done raising my kids, you know, they were about 18. She goes, then I turned back to my work, which I thought was really interesting. But then she traveled the world and painted so much. And I think that, you know, 60 years so that's that's like an older generation example but go ahead I want to hear a newer one and of course now I'm completely blanking on her name but that we had a couple people reach out to us that have decided once their kids left for college that they were like I've got this time now like I'm going to go back and start this again mm -hmm. and then we have people that didn't even start like they had no art going at all until their kids were grown and they were looking for something. And then that's when they found their artistic way. Yeah. yeah and I love that. I, I love that there's no set time to start. Or even if um, in our book, there's a weaver named Marianne Moody and she has lived in Australia and in New York. She says, I, she never thought of herself as creative. She doesn't quote, come from a creative family. And when she had her child, she was like, I needed something to do with my hands. And she picked up a weaving kit and she said, I felt like I was home. So now she makes pretty much a living as an, a fiber artist. And I thought that was so cool. You know, here's yeah. somebody, everybody saying, you'll never do anything creative once you become a mom. And she said, the birth of my child was the birth of me as an artist. So that's, a, that's one that really sticks out to me. Yeah, I guess um, I guess it relates a little bit with um, the whole idea that you started with that that society says once you're a mom you have to set your creative time aside. That's reminding me from what you just said that there are all kinds of wrong messages out there. Like, oh, you're 57. There's no way you can become an artist. And it's important, like you say, to to um, screen out the falseness in everything that you're hearing and remember that it's every day is a new day and you can change it anytime. I like that message. I, I mean, well, Grandma Moses. 
Yeah. How old was she when she started? I mean, yeah. I think at the, at the heart of it, yes, we're mothers and artists, but the biggest message is that we've always felt strongly. I don't care who you are. If you want to do something, go do it, go figure it out or go try or go research it, you know, why not? And if, if anybody tells you not to, then come join us and we will cheer you on. Like that's what we do. Yeah. I always think who says, who says I can't, who, who, yeah. like who specifically is telling me that I can't do this now? Yeah, yeah. his husband's like, you can't become a professional tennis player now. You know, I joke around like, oh, maybe I should play tennis. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who, who is the one telling me this message? That's, that's a great thing to remember. Um, I was wondering something and maybe, maybe you'll feel like answering or one of you will, or neither of you will, but I wanted to ask this question. And then, you know, in the four or five minutes we have left, if there's anything else that the two of you wanted to touch on, that would be great before we, um, before we draw our conversation to a close. My question is for, for you, Marissa, and for you, Heather, you, the idea of modeling behavior for your kids and modeling that creativity is a priority as they grow up um, and how that changes your kids' lives for the better, that makes me wonder right now at whatever ages they are, how do you think your kids would describe what you are as an artist? If, if you know, they said, my mom's an artist, what to them would, being an artist mean? How would they express it based on everything that they've lived through with both of you? Now I'm curious, I don't have to pull one in. Oh, well, okay. I know, so I just thought, because it changes. It definitely changes over their lifetime. So um, I have a seven-year-old and an almost 10-year-old right now. The sad thing I'm finding is like the 10-year-old's getting to that age where she's so critical of what she's creating. And I feel bad because she looks at what I'm creating and then holds herself up to that. So we constantly have this like, well, 45 years from now, then you can compare your artwork to my artwork. You know what I mean? Like my artwork looked like your artwork when I was 10. Like, and so we have a lot of those conversations. Um, I think at times they feel like it takes me away from them. Um, but I'm sure every working parent probably has that, you know, aspect to it. I hope you know, when it's all said and done and they're older and they look back, they see how important it is to create and to have an outlet and to follow, you know, do what you love to do. Like, I think that's really important. Yeah, we have the same, because I mean, actually my son and daughter, and we try not to push them to do anything, but they both enjoy drawing sometimes. And my son will get frustrated occasionally at almost eight. And we have the same conversations. Like your dad got his MFA in painting and taught. So he's been practicing drawing for like 20 years. He might be the best at this type of drawing, but that doesn't mean that yours is not just as beautiful or special, you know? I think they see yeah. that we have fun and we talk about like, you know, you love playing with your Legos and building this. This is me playing with my paints or my, digital drawing or whatever it is because it's really fun and sometimes what I'll do is I try to ask Henry for his opinion like the other day I was coming up with colorways for patterns and I said I'm deciding between this and this which one do you like better and I actually agreed with him and I mm -hmm. said all right I'm picking that and I don't know if he'll remember that but just feeling like I do want his opinion or I even let him play on my computer one time I saved a copy first and he played around and he made something and I showed it to my Instagram friends. So he kind of gets a kick out of those things. Yeah, I agree. I do ask them their opinion a lot. And I, cause I want to know because they, they're coming from a unique perspective, you know, of what they think. And do you think this is done? And is it missing something? And, you know, yeah, I do value their opinion. Yeah. But we all, and then we'll talk about, you know, like, we can do hard things and we can, sometimes it's not easy. Like this is work and um, you know, it, it, it runs the gamut. They might get frustrated if it, they feel like it's being, we're being pulled away, you know, but I, we try to balance it out by saying, okay, well let's now sit on the floor and I'll play Legos with you for, you know, a good 20 minutes. Yeah. But I don't know. I hope they see that like the modeling of behavior that, they know that for themselves. And when they're, if they decide to become parents one day that they remember to 
you know, that they're humans first. Yeah. yeah. I try to remind them that we're people too, but that takes like 20 years, I think, to realize. Yeah. Yeah. Are there, um, are there any um, other important, I guess, thoughts that the two of you have that you're thinking are key for moms who are artists to understand as they're, as they're learning about the balance. Um, I know that everybody goes through the process in a different way, but I guess basically I'm just wondering, are there any key things you two feel that we've skipped over that you'd like to, you'd like to tell everyone about this balancing act that you two are doing and that you're helping other people to do? Ooh, I think knowing that, um, you're going to, you might feel like crap some days and that's okay. You might feel guilty. You might feel, you know, bad, but that's okay. Um, just trust in yourself that, um, you're on the right path. If you really want to do something like maybe wake up early and do it. You know, if, if it's bothering you that your kids are getting resentful of your time, I've been waking up a lot earlier or staying up late, you know, that's a way to kind of balance that and that you don't have to figure everything out. You just need to figure out one step and then the next step and then the next step. And usually that will start unfolding. So just don't, don't get so wrapped up in what you have to do 15 steps, a hundred steps ahead. Just focus on this, the next thing. And before you know it, you've done a lot of things. Um, I think for me, it always comes down to the identity aspect of it and not everybody goes through that. But I think realizing that it's okay to be sad for the person you were before you were a mom, um, but realize that it's okay to be where you are now and that that's gonna be a whole different experience full of really amazing things that the before you would have never experienced. Um, and, you know, it's like growing into a new skin. So, you know, having the patience with yourself to like, to just let yourself grow into it. Yeah. And growing, I think growing as a parent, like I've only been a parent for seven and a half years. <laughs> so like you're, we're always learning something and it's always changing. I think that's the biggest thing. Everything's always changing. Be, have gentleness, grace with yourself, mm -hmm. be open and flexible because something is always going to come up, you know? Yeah. But keep a little time for your own dreams, you know, even if you just chip away at them. I think that because that you're going to have, everyone's going to tell you too, right? Uh, you're going to have so much time soon. They're going to be, you know, grown up and out of the house and like before, a snap of a finger, you know, that can be hard to hear sometimes too, but on some days. Yeah. I'm trying to think of anything else. Hmm. Yeah. Just be do you think that, do you think that there will, um, do, do you think that when your kids are your ages, and let's just assume that they have kids of their own, do you think that um, very many aspects of what all of us are living through now in terms of all the challenges we've just talked about with balancing motherhood and art, do you think at, at the core, anything in the situation that your kids are dealing, are going to deal with will be different? Yeah, I, I greatly do. And that's just because I've had the chance to sit in with some young moms lately that are artists and they don't have the same hang ups that I have. Oh. So it's interesting. Not that they don't have the same new mom issues, but the idea of being an artist and a mother is that's just who they are. Like they, they have, they're much more comfortable in themselves as artists um, and they're okay with bringing their kids along for the journey and their kids are fitting more into their lifestyle, it seems like. Um, so I'm hoping that those generations down the road, we will, you know, kind of, they'll have a little less of the pressure, societal pressure that I think we have. I'm not saying that some of the other identity issues and, you know, personal creativity stuff won't be there, but 
I'm thinking there's a little less or hope I'm hoping there's a little less societal pressure on them. That is a good point though, because even my son was talking like my grandma or my mom said something about, Oh, this doctor. And I mean, she was very liberal and everything, but she mentioned like, Oh, he, that just assuming that the doctor was a guy, she goes to female doctors too. And my son was the one who piped up and said, Oh, grandma, don't you mean he or she? Because saying you don't, it could be a girl doctor. <laughs> Cause he'll be like, yeah, girls rule. And then, but it, it's just interesting to hear the things that are, they don't even think about anymore, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, I always joke for the longest time because my daughter's older and we'd read the books that she liked to read when my son was little. And we, you know, read a lot of girl empowerment stuff. And he said, mom, can boys be engineers? <laughs> I know we might be like going down there. Right. The totally opposite direction. But yeah. So, no. I, you know, there's hope. So. Yeah. I think that, I think those are really encouraging reminders. And um, also, I think from what you mentioned, Heather, about about women becoming mothers who are becoming mothers right now, the fact that the thinking is different, I mean, that that's a testament maybe to the work that the two of you and all the other mothers who are artists out there to the balancing act they've done because it, serving as that kind of example, um, you know, change may come a lot faster than you think who knows maybe some of those new mothers heather that you're saying are so much more confident than you were maybe it's because of some things that you did and ways that you you spoke out so i really i really love that kind of hopeful look i feel like the question i asked you was probably kind of um, a downer but <laughs> your answers really make us all remember i think how important this is not just in terms of each of us individually being creative and not just in terms of each of us individually raising kids who are going to be a great part of their world, but also just the fact that, you know, it, it makes a big difference beyond you and beyond your family. And I think, um, I really like remembering that we all need, we all, all need points of hope, but it's the kind of thing you mentioned that community is really important to understand that bigger picture that you're not just slogging along alone that a lot of other people are out there to help you and it's it's really a really a big deal yeah and as you're speaking it makes me think i think speaking on it is great and more i think there's and i'm hoping that more arts colleges are speaking on it that obviously there's a lot more women professors with children and i know where i graduated from mica which was very male dominant when i was there and now, you know, I think some women bring their babies to class while they teach. So yeah. things like that. And I'm really hoping the art world on a larger scale might start to talk about it a little more, you know, it not be. And then you run, you run that parallel thing with if you make it, if you don't want to make it a big deal either, you know, because then you want it to be something that's just accepted and just is. So I don't know. Because yeah, being about it helps. You don't like we love that we are artist mothers and supporting it and and helping with those conversations because i think five years ago there wasn't a ton of resources like when we googled artist mothers it was yeah. van gogh's mother blah 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 you know but now i mean how many things are we seeing cropping up like art mother communities and creative mother communities and artist mother residencies. There's a fabulous artist mother podcast by our friend Kaylin Butine and she's doing amazing work. So um, now we're like, okay, great. Because at one point when we did the interviews, we said, we have explored, there are so many threads. We basically <laughs> had a hypothesis, can people do it? Yes, we absolutely think people can do it on your own terms. And now we want to evolve this conversation you know what what is next what does that look like and you know your art can be whatever it is you again don't have to just be defined by your role as a, a mother you're heather you made, you're made up of a hundred different things and yeah. you, you know mm -hmm. but i think that like with what you said in our children there's such a realization of everything being so connected you know with the pandemic virus you know the virus mm -hmm we're being home safe to help others that we might, may never meet. And, you know, like everyone's together and everyone's not and interconnected. That sounds so rambly, but 
with the internet, we're all together in a way. <laughs> yes. Um, and we can't be a human connection. And that's going to be really interesting to see how that evolves once things are, you know, more normal and what it, what does it mean to return to, you know, how do we move forward versus just yeah. whatever was before maybe, how can we make it, things better? Which is a direct parallel to what I kind of mentioned with um, the direct parallel with, with your identity as a mom. It's kind of the same thing. Like it's not going to be like it was, you know, so okay, you got to kind of look at towards what it's going to be now, you know? Yeah. But I have hope for, I was telling them like, you know, it's been hard on the kids and they're, you know, they miss their friends. And you remember how time goes so slowly when you're a child, right? <laughs> But so and when my son, they've been in their um, Zoom calls with their friends, but it's more a friendly chat and they're playing school together. So mm -hmm. I sometimes they're playing their iPads together, but recently they've been playing school. And I just felt like it was this nice mashup of us growing up maybe in the 80s mm -hmm. and them being, you know, instead of sitting together at somebody's house or in the backyard, they're mm -hmm. on their computers together. Yeah. And then they're multitasking. I now mm -hmm. say do two things at a time instead of three things at a time <laughs> because I've just given up that he's going to ever do one thing at a time. That's just, they're different maybe. Thanks so much, Marissa. <laughs> Thanks, Heather. Um, I will let all of these ideas percolate in my mind and I know everybody else will too. I really appreciate you sharing these important ideas and encouraging us to connect. Thanks so much, Marissa Huber and Heather Kirtland. Thanks, it was lovely. Thank you, Sandra. And we owe so much to you for seeing us and you made you make this happen. We wouldn't be here without yeah. you. Thanks so, so much. Thank Bye you. everyone, thanks for joining us.